Hello, everyone, and yes, welcome to May's edition of our Academy webinar as we talk about how we can expand our network using our Bullhorn Job Publishing. Today, we're going to talk all about publishing your jobs to various sources using Bullhorn's free native JobCast feature. Now, hand in hand with JobCast is our career portal which essentially is a customizable website that gives job seekers and candidates access to our company's published jobs. Now, this is also free, but does require some setup time from your administrator. If your company does not have the career portal set up today, we will be sending you instructions after today's webinar to go ahead and get that started. Today, we are going to take a look at each of those topics here and provide you, of course, tips in publishing those jobs to our career portal. We'll also provide suggestions for posting eye-catching job descriptions and also to provide information on how to efficiently link published jobs to social media platforms. That's right. Not only can you post to your website, but you can also post to social media. So we're going to get a glimpse into all of that here today. So starting off, Let's make our way into the jobs list within Bullhorn. Through this location, I want to highlight a couple things. First of all, we can only post jobs that are open. So let's quickly filter out any jobs that are closed. Also, I only want to post jobs that are still accepting candidates. So let me apply that filter also. And further, I may want to focus on those jobs that don't currently have any submissions yet. Finally, we can also refine our list even further by adding the publishing status column and using it to only show those jobs that have not yet been published by someone at our company. Okay, now it's important to note that we cannot mass publish jobs in Bullhorn. So let me take it from the top. We can publish a job either from the list view using the binocular slide out or also, too, from the record directly. For today's session, I'm going to go ahead and pull from the slide out. As we get that slide out provided to us, of course, the actions drop down. We'll find the option to publish. So for those of us with publishing access, we're going to see that publish option through, through that drop down. And boom, takes us right here to our publishing page. Notice a couple things. First of all, the social media icons on the left-hand side are grayed out. This is because we need to post to our career portal first, and then our social media posts will then link back to our career portal posting. I also want to note that the options to post to Career Builder, Monster, and Indeed are also visible. Also, for those of us dialing in from the APAC region, which likely you're not listening to me live, but perhaps on a recording, you can also now use JobCast to publish your Bullhorn jobs directly to Seek. Before I publish, however, if there's anything in the job description that we may want to modify before publishing into the web, we're going to want to do that here. Edits you make on this screen won't change the internal description on the job record, only the published description. Now, I can't let you leave here today without providing some best practices. So when it comes to posting your job, think about some of the following to make your job description stand out. We should always think about what will attract someone to want to read our published job instead of the competitions, especially if it's for the same job. You also want to think about how a person might search for this type of job and incorporate those keywords into the description. Make it easy to read by using bullet points or breaking up the verbiage through that description. Don't include all of the details into one block of text because individuals, they might not read all of that block of text. They're trying to quickly scrim through in hopes to find those keywords that pop out to them right away. It's also important to note that included with those keywords, salary. Research shows that individuals are more inclined to look more closely at jobs with salary information than those without. Think about it. You would be in the same shoes considering the same things, right? Also, too, very important, we proofread our work before publishing. Nothing looks more unprofessional than a bunch of typos. 
The good news, however, Bullhorn will help you out with some misspellings, as you'll notice the underlying corrections when typing in your words. Also, too, verify your category. Categories upon posting your jobs, they're going to pull directly from the job record category in Bullhorn. But note that while job records can have more than one category internally, for the job boards, we can only have one. So if we make our way back to this posting page here, notice we have our description, and as I mentioned, notice the layout that I have here. And you know what, too? Let me take my own advice and let me add in a bullet for salary. In reference to the category, notice here the categories drop down. So again, if your job description, or I should say if your job in Bullhorn does have multiple categories, it will default to the first one, but you can always change that here. So make sure you are double checking not just the description with the tips I provided, but also to make sure we are accurately categorizing what we need posted. Once we have confirmed everything is laid out exactly how we want it, we're going to go ahead and publish. Notice we get the success message here. It popped up quickly for us. And also, too, after that success message appears and removes itself, we can see that our social media icons are now active. We got the blue active icons here. Now, when it comes to posting to social media, quick rule of thumb, we can only post to one social media account at a time. So you can have multiples, but we can only post one at a time. And also, too, note that the first time you attempt to do so, Bullhorn will prompt you to enter your social media account credentials, so your username and password. And these options here, they're all designed to work with your personal accounts. Though you could link a company account if you wanted to. Now, also, want to add a note on top of that. If a bunch of your colleagues all link to the same company Twitter account, for example, be careful that you're not all posting a bunch of duplicate jobs. So if you are going to link company accounts, it may be a good idea to designate a specific person or team to be your social media posters. All right, therefore we can ensure that these items are getting posted and getting posted once. So let me go ahead and post to LinkedIn. All right. Posting on LinkedIn, if I wasn't already accessing my account, it would have prompted me to sign in as mentioned. Now also too, it allows me to add a little blurb about this message. So adding in the details, select the link below to apply. All right. Now, as we see this information, we can choose to share with just our connections, or we can make it completely public. As I share, your LinkedIn post will essentially appear on your profile as a status update. If I go into my LinkedIn account, for example, let me go ahead and refresh and take a look through my view. I'm going to be able to see here, check out all my activity. I can see my new job posting, and I can see them reflected here for me. There it is. Great opening. Select the link below to apply. It looks clean. And I can see here this hyperlink below that's going to drive me right to that post. In fact, notice, once I select it, it brings me to a brand new window. Got a new tab here, and I can see exactly what the post looks like. It's nice and clean. We got the description laid out. We can see here the purpose, the description. Ah, there's my salary. I'm reading through my bullet points. Man, this looks like a good job, one that speaks to me. All right. Now, alongside that description and the details we've added in, take a look to the right-hand side. We can also see here the category we identified, the title, and also the option to apply. Now, generally, your career portal will be linked from or embedded within your company's website. So if I hit apply, candidates will then have the ability to enter their name, email address, phone, and even to upload a copy of that resume or that CV. 
Returning candidates who apply for additional jobs will have their name and email address saved here for ease of use. It'll recognize them as they visit this page and this portal again. Now, I'm not going to apply to a specific job here today because last year we actually conducted a webinar that went a little more in depth into the career portal and provided the options to apply to those jobs and what it looks like on the applicant's end and then also, too, from your view within Bullhorn. We do have a recording of that webinar posted, so I'd like to take a minute to show you that location so that way we can get a refresher if we had the chance to attend it previously or get us a good glimpse into how that functionality is available for us. In Bullhorn, of course, you have that Get Help location at the top right, bringing us to our Bullhorn Academy. It's through here we have our free webinars stored. And through this area, we can see here, of course, how to register for all future webinars. But if we take a look, we created that webinar in May 2016, maximizing our recruiting efforts with the Bullhorn Career Portal. This is available to you. It's stored and recorded for your convenience, so you can come back and watch it at any time. As we make our way back to our Career Portal, another thing I want to mention here is that we're going to notice this arrow to the left-hand side. By selecting this here, this is going to show us from our home page a list of all our open public jobs that have been posted. So if anything else sticks out to the candidate, they can simply select that title, head back into the description, and apply there. So it's a nice, easy view, nice, easy navigation for them as well. They can filter on location and category. More information provided in the recording provided earlier. Now let's fast forward a little bit. Let's say that some time has passed and we've placed a candidate to that customer rep position. Well, remember how at the beginning of the webinar I said that we cannot post closed jobs to the career portal, only open? Well, this means that when we close a job in Bullhorn, if it's posted here, it'll automatically be removed. This is very convenient and very time-saving, of course. So if I head into Bullhorn, take a look at my job, I can get into my job record and close from here. So let's say I made that placement. I no longer need candidates applying to that role. I can now close it out. Okay. Now, of course, in real life, the job would have submissions and interviews and placements log, but for the sake of time, I just wanted to simply close it for you. Now, if we return to that career portal from within my view, let me get back here. If we return to the career portal and refresh, customer service rep, no longer there. It's immediately removed. So upon closing, it takes immediate effect in real time. However, our LinkedIn posting is still up. Okay, it's still up and we need to take care of that. Otherwise, anyone who clicks on this post, they're gonna get an error. Oh no. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to delete our LinkedIn post directly from inside our LinkedIn account. Okay, so we can make those updates here. Just like any other status we need to update. And the same is true not just here within LinkedIn. It's going to be the same for Facebook and Twitter as well. Okay, so we need to make sure we are deleting those from the social media accounts in addition to the career portal. So always keep that in mind. All right. So what happens when a candidate applies to a published job, you might ask? Bullhorn creates what's called a web response by parsing the candidate's resume into Bullhorn. And you can actually view all your web responses in Bullhorn in one location. That is going to be right here through our menu slide out in the submissions list. Now yours might be labeled internal submissions, submissions, matches, just depends on your labeling here. But it's this icon, this gray icon. This list is going to help us manage our web responses. And specifically, you know, when, when candidates not only apply to a job, but anytime we create submissions, they're going to be stored here in the submissions list. So specifically, what we're going to want to do to keep track of those web responses is to head into the status column and set the filter like I have to web response. That's the only filter we need to show us those candidates that have applied online. 
Now, of course, just like any list, you can set as many filters as you want. So maybe we want to set a status for a web response, but we want to see candidates who applied online to a specific job. I can come in here. I can set the filter for machine operator. And I can see everyone who's applied online to the machine operator role and be able to see the fact that they are still in a web response status. So from here, we can view information regarding that web response. By using those binoculars, I can see here details tied, who's the candidate, what's the job. And, a can and of course, when a candidate's resume is parsed in, it automatically creates a candidate profile for them. In addition to that, we can see the history, but we also get the candidate's resume. Okay, so remember when they upload it from the portal, it's automatically going to be carried into Bullhorn here for you. You don't have to download it from anywhere else and upload it yourself. No, no, no. Does it right there for you. Now also, too, you can see the job description laid out here as well. So you can compare that information, toggle between both of those values if you need to. And then also, you can decide whether to take the candidate forward or not. Because by using that actions dropdown is where we can choose to either create the internal submission. Because as you know, when a candidate applies online, of course, they're taking a shot at it. They think, yeah, I'm qualified, but are they really? So that's up to you to determine. And after making that determination, you can mark internal submittal. Or if for any unfortunate reason, they are rejected. You can use the update button to document that rejection. Now, it's important, of course, that we keep track of those statuses and absolutely stay on top of them. So if you do not have a rejected status or even web response rejected as a submission status, that is something I may encourage you to do. And if that is something you don't have at this time and feel that, yes, you know what, that is a good idea. Let me get that added. Your system administrator can get that added for you. That way it helps you stay on top of your pipeline. And then also, too, you can evaluate who's applied online and are they truly a good fit. So we talked about how we can post those jobs and the options for posting, what needs to be edited, and some best practices for posting as well and where we can post too. We got, a get, we got a glimpse on where, when someone applies online, where we can capture those responses and then evaluate if we want to take it further and document our workflow. Now, if this stuck out to you and you don't have that portal enabled yet to initiate the career portal setup for your company, just simply navigate to our GitHub site and we're going to send you a link after this webinar that uh, includes that GitHub site. And there's going to be some instructions, okay? So use the navigation through the GitHub site and follow the instructions for downloading, configuring, and uploading the website files to your site host. I want you to note that Bullhorn does not host these files for you. Rather, you'll need to use an external website for best results, one that supports SSL, such as GoDaddy or Amazon, AWS, S3. Instructions will vary slightly depending on the host you choose. Now, you might just say, Terry, whoa, that's a lot of information you just told me. Again, we're going to be sending you the instructions here after we conclude here today. Now, to complete that configuration, our Bullhorn support team will also be able to provide you what's called a corp token and swim lane number. All right. Now, support will also provide you the career portal enablement form. And you'll need to complete and send back via a ticket that your admin can submit so they can complete the configuration on their end. Okay. The portal itself, it does use an out-of-the-box style. Okay. However, I got some examples that I can actually show you. Okay. Now, with a few examples, let me go ahead and pull them up for you. Okay, so we got our out of the box, kind of like how you saw here today, but also too, we can see as it's actually embedded, what does it look like? Okay, you got your logos in there. We got the description, the location. Also too, I'll give you another visual. 
and it gives you an idea of how, not just how you can view from my sample, but also to take a look at just some other formats and variations. The navigation is essentially very similar, but it's, well, how can I tailor it to really make it my own? And of course, our bullhorn portal. All right, so we can even see from our bullhorn website. Now overall today, we talked all about publishing our jobs to our various sources using Bullhorn's free native JobCast feature. Now before we head into q and I'm going to hand it over to Emily who will speak for a moment about Engage coming up very soon. It is our user conference. It is a blast, you guys. If you haven't signed up yet, absolutely make sure you get your tickets. Hi, thanks Terry. Yeah, absolutely. Engage is only two short weeks away. There's still room for registrations. You can sign up today using the, re the discount code webinar100. We'll lock you into a lower price. There's one full day of in-person professional bullhorn trainings and two full days of educational sessions from 40 really exceptional speakers, including a keynote from Ann Dunwoody, who's the first four-star female general of the United States, and another one by Freakonomics author Stephen Levitt. So lots of really great content lined up. Uh, like Terry said, if you guys aren't already signed up, you should definitely register today. With that being said, we hope to see you there and we'll move on into some questions. We had a few questions come in during the session here, so we'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, we're going to start um, with one from Kimberly. And the question, Terry, can all staff access the webinars that you mentioned or are those des designated just for admins? Yeah, so those webinars are visible to everyone, and through everyone's individual login, they should each have that Get Help button at the top right, and that's what's going to drive you to our Bullhorn Academy. By default, it's probably going to take you to the e-learning videos, which are absolutely also a great resource for you on the how-tos in Bullhorn, but just to the right of that are the free webinars, so if you have to miss any of our prior webinars, you can find them all stored for you here. We got a lot of best practices, a lot of great uh, recordings, including the one we mentioned regarding the Career Portal 2. Uh, wonderful. We have another question coming in from Kim. If you put a job on hold in Bullhorn, will it, remo will it remove it from the job seekers view? Well, if the status is on hold, it's going to still be on the portal unless you close the job. So it all has to do with this open-close setting. So if it's open, it's posted. If it's closed, it's pulled. Thank you. We had a few different questions come in from different people regarding uh, closing a job. Um, when you close a job, will it automatically close it on the um, job websites and social media when you close a job through Bullhorn? Sure. When you close a job through Bullhorn, it will close it on the portal, but it's not going to pull it from your social media posting. So you would need to close it in Bullhorn, and that'll take care of the portal. But you'll need to go to where you've posted through social media and delete directly from LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. So they're separate, separate uh, deletions. Thank you. Um, does, the, does the career portal cost money? Good question. So the uh, since Bullhorn does not host your site, you may be subject to fees for your host site. However, Bullhorn does not charge for this feature. So it's all about the hosting. Uh, another question that's come in, um, some, some people are noticing they don't have the Get Help button. Their button says Live Chat. Can you speak a little bit about where they can find access to Bullhorn Academy? Yeah, so if you see live chat there, you are possibly a system administrator getting access to reaching out to our support team. So simply what you could do if you need to access our Bullhorn Academy, we do have a couple locations, one of which is simply going to Google and you can type in our Bullhorn Academy here. And if you spell it right, that'll get you directly to that location. But it's our customer portal. 
And in fact, the direct link, if you want to save it as a favorite, which of course I recommend doing, is customerportal.bullhorn.com. Save it as a favorite. It'll be there in your menu and you can access it at any time. Excellent. Um, some users have noticed their career portal looks a little bit different than what they were seeing displayed uh, on their screen. How would they get theirs to look more similar as far as features? Sure. So unlike the Bullhorn CRM, updates we deploy to the portal do not take effect automatically. So in order to receive the latest updates, you must download them from our GitHub site. And as far as customizing the look and feel also, for example, better match your company's brand. You can work with a web developer that has uh, CSS knowledge and they can assist you with that as well. Wonderful, we have a question from Cameron. Does the career portal have mobile functionality? Ah, good question. So, we, so users should be able to access just like any other website from those phones. And um, Heather has asked, what job boards are you currently able to post to using the JobCast? So with the JobCast, let me make my way back into our post view, and then you can see a couple. So here we have Indeed, Career Builder, and Monster. And of course, you would have a separate enablement with your, of course, um, engagement or relationship with either three of those areas and then uh, through there you'd be able to post through those at this current time. So we can see all our, all our options to the left alongside social media. Excellent and I think we've got time for a couple more. Um, can the look of the career portal be changed so it matches the design of the company's website better? Yeah, so depending on, of course, your, your, your site host, your web developer you're working with, you can absolutely, just like all these prior, well, that I showed, uh, all these prior examples, these are tailored to that individual's layout, their, their colors. We can see here above where we can see their, their logos and really essentially looks like it's just embedded to their site and it's coming right from them. So yeah, you can tailor the way that it's embedded into the view just like we see here. But as far as the structure, it's gonna look pretty similar to how we have reflected on here, our bullhorn and even those that we saw as we were posting here today. So that way it looks a little more fit that like you guys just created it. Awesome, thanks Terry. Um, can you explain a little bit more about web responses? Absolutely. When a new candidate applies to a job posting, Bullhorn parses the candidate's resume and logs that application as a web response. So when I came in, and I mentioned here that the internal submissions, it holds a list of you know, candidates that we've submitted to jobs, but also primarily when candidates apply online. You know, we saw from the portal, they enter in their information and provide their resume. Well, we then take that resume and pull it into Bullhorn. And not only do we see the fact that this candidate applied to this job online, but also too, I showed you through the binoculars or even through that candidate their own profile exists and we can see the resume stored here. So all this information is gonna be visible to us and simply by leveraging the filters within our submissions column is gonna help us track that information. And when that resume comes in, we're viewing their qualifications. We highlight, yes, they are a good fit or not so much this time around. What we're gonna be able to do is document those next steps and using that actions button to either reject or create that internal submission where we can investigate a little further internally before we decide that we're ready to send to the client. Now also to another best practice here, when in a, for easy access I should say to finding your web responses at a later time, come in, I recommend setting that filter on the status to web response. You can save that out, makes it easy access, so you can come run that favorite to see who at any time is still in a web response status. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Terry. And thank you for everyone who's joined us here today. Uh, we are just about out of time. We've had lots of wonderful questions come in, some just in the last couple of minutes. We will be following up with everyone through email once we have a chance to review your questions. Thank you so much again for joining us today. We hope to see you in a couple weeks at Engage and have a wonderful and safe Memorial Day weekend. Thanks, everyone.